Hello. Hi, Mubarak. I'm Mish. Good, good, good one. Right. Okay, Nimish. Yeah. Uh, when you, I have uploaded the recording for yesterday. Okay. Hope you get the chance to just have a look on that. Yeah. And uh, I would be uh, sharing with the feedback. Uh, okay. Please provide your valuable feedback. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. 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 Okay, Venu. Thank you. Thank you. So. Yeah, we know today we will uh, talk a little bit about, you know, the programming aspects, you know, okay. so some of the very quick terms and uh, terminologies, which we should be aware in the programming side. Okay. And I want to make sure that we juggle, it will be a kind of an FAQ quickly and okay. then we'll move ahead. Okay. Okay. So, see, let's start with something like, you know, uh, I would say, you know, what are these uh, keywords in C? So do you know what's keyword in C? The keywords, okay. Yeah. yeah. Are, you, are you aware about the keyword? So what does the keyword mean? In, uh, I mean, the, the keywords cannot be used as a variable anywhere. So probably we can say that they are reserve names. Reserve names, yes. Absolutely, okay. So, yeah, I just wanted to put out some notes and, you know, okay. uh, yeah. So as now you have seen the build aspects of the program, let's focus on some very attractive features of C++, though we know some of the very quick core features that, you know, we have a very good low level language interaction. We understood that there's a lot of legacy and standards behind it, like NCC 99, Mistra, others. Then the library is very, very powerful. So, you know, if you say what is the most uh, powerful feature of C, it is not the keywords, rather it is the library which it provides. You know, so standard C library which is there is pretty strong. It is very powerful. Okay. We also derive that you know, if you look at the hardware, then indirect addressing mode uh, is supported at a high level language. So it's the C language which started this concept that you can write a high level language and you can interact with the hardware. You remember? Yeah, the pointers. Uh... Yes, exactly. So we spoke about one unique section uh, of hardware, which can be easily addressed by a C program directly. Correct. Yes. Yeah, that was uh, memory mapped hardware, right? Yes. And of course, we can you know well optimize for embedded system with time. So these are some very important keywords which you should never miss. You know, there are thirty-two keywords in C plus C, but out of that, some of them often is to be used in, you know, uh, as a C uh, programmer, when you write embedded software, usually you must be very versed, well versed with these kinds of keywords. Const, volatile, auto, static, external, register, struct and union, you should play around with them. You should be aware about function pointers, arrays, bit fields, and bitwise operators. I mean, these are to name few, but these are something like you'll be always playing your program with, you know. So whenever you look at an embedded program, you will see a lot of these keywords around them, okay? Okay. And if you look from the standard library usage, then, you know, uh, 8 to 16 bit versus 32 uh, bit, one of the OS will be always running, okay? So I think when you talk about uh, lifecycle storage classes, I have completed this. Today we will talk about data and controls and looping, typically, okay? Okay. If you remember, we took some example about what is static and external as a difference, right? Correct. Yeah. Yes. Auto and register keyword is deprecated, okay? We don't use now, but you know, in certain case, I can explain you today, okay? okay. So let's, let's look at some elements of a C program. So whenever you write a C program, you will always have to remember something. First and foremost, main must be the first calling function, correct? Yes. We also understood that can be other if linker script is used for security purposes. We can have our own main name, right? Correct. Yeah. Mainless. Yeah, mainless. 
And then, you know, all the codes are built across functions. So, you know, C is a procedural programming language. So the concept of object does not exist. We can simulate the concept of object. We will take this as an example later. So how you can have an object-oriented concept implemented in C program. Okay. Then we should also know about something more that, you know, function contains a set of instructions to do a particular job. The whole idea is to possibly reuse the code again and again. Yeah, so you break down all your you know uh, instruction in function, and uh, you know you, you try to keep calling them whenever there's a need. Hence, now as you know that you know you have a library being created, so you can create those functions across different files, combine them together as utility and ship them. Right? Yeah. Now there are two kinds of statements which uh, uh, C has. Okay, one of them is called as normal or concrete statement. And another uh, is called a logical statement. Now, what do you mean by statement? In general, a statement consists of uh, a semicolon at the end. So this is a typical example of a statement, line number 120. Okay. Okay. And if you talk about logical statement, you can see something like this. Logical statement is like if, and then you do not have any semicolon, but this is a legal statement. Okay. Yeah. So why we should know about this? Because these are called as sequence point. Now, what do you mean by sequence point? Uh, the places where compiler will either evaluate an expression or decide to delay the evaluation of an expression or may generate some temporary out of an expression. Okay. So that is the whole idea of understanding the statements. Okay. Now, you know, we should also be very clear about when we write in the program, what is a declaration? What is a definition? What is the initialization? What is an assignment? And then how a statement comprises of an expression. Okay. Getting it. So let's take a very good example here. So this is an example of what? A declaration, a function declaration. No memory is allocated for it. This is an example for a function having a body. It means it's an example of definition of a function. It means there is some core segment allocated for it. It means some text part, text segment will be added to it. Maybe 10 bytes, 20 bytes, 30 bytes. But this is a part of my code segment. Got it? Okay. So there's a definition of a code. Function is declared here. And this is the definition of the function. Maybe across files, maybe within files, but that's definition. Because it has an open body and a closed body. Yeah. Another example in terms of variable being declared. So if I say something like extern int me. So this is an example of what declaration. There is no memory allocated in this file. What does it refer? That I am going to use this variable me, which is defined somewhere else in the file. Got it? Correct. Yeah, you, you explained that. I explained this, yeah. This is an example of forward declaration. Again, it's it's the structured declaration, but the definition is not. <coughs> so struct is a keyword by which you can combine a lot of data types and you can make an abstract data type. For example, real world objects can be represented by using a struct. So this is just an example of struct. You can give any name of the structure, like say device. Now, uh, but there is no memory allocated for this. It's just giving a hint to the compiler that see there is a name called as device which right now refers to a struct. The definition may follow later on, somewhere here. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, so this is an example of what definition of the structure. Okay, so if I say if I want to know from a compiler the size of the struct over here, it will give me this size. It will add all this and will explain that. Okay. okay, so that's something. Then you can talk about something called as declaration come definition. So say for example here, int i, whether it's a declaration or definition. So it is both. It is declaration come definition. It means whenever a main is called, a memory for i will be allocated. So because the memory is allocated, it is a definition. Correct? Okay. Okay. Declaration means memory is not allocated. For example, external int me, struct device. There's no memory located. Or 
void file. These are some only for symbolic purpose, which explains a compiler that there is something like this, which is going to come in future. Definition will follow later. Okay. Yeah. Now it is allocating the memory, but can I ask you what is the value of I? What data does it contain? It will be empty. I mean, some garbage. garbage yeah. So it's in a very good example of that. It is defined, but it is not initialized. Okay. Int J assigns 10. This is an example of what? Declaration come definition and that is initialized. Okay. So it's an example of initialization. Not only that it allocates the memory, it also initializes a initial value for it. So oh. J is always 10 from here onwards. Oh. I, not that place. Okay. okay. Now let's look at the statement. You know, when you look at statement, then you can see here we have something like semicolon. So now my, the question is, is semicolon a statement or not? The answer is yes. Just an empty semicolon at line number 146 explains what? It's a statement, but it means there is no operation. It's a very empty statement. There is nothing very significant about this. Okay. But see is how powerful it is. If I say something like while one and then put a semicolon at that, what does it mean? It is damn powerful. You understand? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It means you are creating a demon. A program will keep spinning over here. It will never come out. So manually, I can synchronize the program. Mm -hmm. Imagine if I didn't had a in language a support of empty semicolon, I would have never been able to achieve this, right? Okay. Yeah. yeah. So even uh, empty semicolon refers to no operations. That's why it is no op. So sometimes people say, say for example, J colon. So it's an example of what? Again, a statement. An ex statement comprises of what? Expression. Okay. And expression contains what? Operands and operators, which must be evaluated. Correct? So when I write in a statement, say for example, just to give you an example of say X assigns X plus Y. So what is this? It's an example of a statement. Correct? Yes because it ends with a semicolon now. Now this is a statement comprises of what? An expression, right? It is an expression, X plus Y is an expression, which is assigned to, again, X is an expression. Where there is a left-hand side expression and there is a right-hand side expression, if you can see. So X plus Y in this case is an example of right-hand side expression, correct? Yeah. And if you look at the associativity, first X plus Y will be evaluated. Mm -hmm. And out of this, there will be a result coming up. So suppose X is one and Y is two, then the result is going to be three. So that where will that three result be stored? So compiler internally generates a temporary variable for you. Mm -hmm. So internally, whenever this expression will be evaluated, a temporary will be generated and that temporary finally will be assigned to what X and X will be modified. Okay. All right. It has a left hand side and a right hand side operation. But there are some which are very basic ones like J, you know, J is declared to what 10. Now my question is, if I write J, is it a legal statement or not? J semicolon. Um, I mean, there is. It is, though we are not using it. Maybe, yeah, maybe compiler will give us a warning saying that, hey, J is unutilized, do something. Yeah. Maybe, you know, I can say something like I assigns J, it becomes more meaningful that the content of J is being dumped in I, right? Yeah. This assignment. Yeah. Yeah. But otherwise, it's still, it is still a legal question. I mean, expression or state. So it won't throw any error? Just... Error is not there. The program will definitely pass. Generate temporary for you. Okay. Now what I am trying to explain here is more important that how does this gets evaluated? Hmm. So J refers to, it's a symbol. It cannot be understood by machine for sure. It's only for human. When we debug the program, we should know, okay, there is a J. 
we all know that J refers to some unique location provided by compiler on that hardware. Correct? Yes. Yeah. 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 So now what they do is the compiler uses two basic expression opera operators over here. One is a reference operator, which is ampersand. And another is star, which is called as dereference operator. You know, programmers don't see this, but it is uh, to be known that these are the operators internally used via which J is resolved. So whenever you write J, actually compiler first and foremost places prefix this reference operator in the beginning. By putting a reference operator, it will try to get the location where J is. Getting it. And then further, it will dereference that by using a star over it. So by dereferencing, it will fetch the value where J is. Okay. Right? So J has a location. So how do you get a location of J? By using a reference operator. And how do you fetch the value of J? By dereferencing. So what I mean by this, even though I would have written something like this, it is legal statement, but it is very, very, you know, irritating for programmers to write this. Mm -hmm. If you look at Bell Labs 1969 box PDP-7, Ken Thompson and Dennis Ritchie wrote the code like this. Later on, they decided that this is so confusing for everyone. Why don't we abstract this? So they removed these. Okay. But compiler still does the same thing internally on behalf of it. You don't need to see it. That's it. But this is very essential for you to understand the way evaluation of a variable. Understand. Okay. Yeah. Not many people know this again. Now, this is very simple. You know, I is having assignment. This is RHS. The value of memory implied goes to I. IJ plus 10, we discussed about this. If one is a legal statement, though it is wrong, it should not be. But if one, it's good always that there must be a comparison operator, right? Yeah, logically. There is very weird also. Like if you say X is equal to one, also it is accepted. Mm -hmm. C is uh, not designed very low. It could have been much, much better that it gives an error to me. Saying that, see, you are in if, it must be only these operators which can be used. Mm -hmm. But C doesn't, you know, it's a weekly type check language, doesn't care. It gives you, it says it's more flexible. Ultimately, you want to evaluate it to some constant value. So if it's zero, it falls. If it's one, true or greater, correct? Right? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So just wanted to show you on, on, on those lines. Now let's talk about, you know, some, you know, uh, test on this. I just wanted to show you this also. So, okay, I hope you can see the screen. Yeah, I can see. Yeah. <clears throat> Okay, so we need to log in. Why is it so? Hang on. Yeah. Yeah. Get into my directory. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Uh, An image. So I'll just talk about the, you know, the basic ones right now, stdio.h. <clears throat> and I'll give you some uh, uh, program assignments to try it out and come back, you know, yeah. the, because that is also equally important. So is it possible for you to spend some time this weekend, say a couple of hours, one or two hours? 
Yeah, sure, right? Yeah. Should be able to suspend. Yeah. yeah. So give it a try. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. See, first I wanted to show you about the declaration stuff here. So we'll talk about say int i. Fair enough. Int j some 10. And I wanted to say ampersand j. So I'll print this out for you first. Okay. So you print it. The expression j. Mod d, mod d, mod d. So probably I'll say mod p. Mod p is used for printing the addresses. Okay. So I would say uh, j. I would say so. String will be in double quotes, comma separated, and then all the variable names. So this j refers to a symbol mod d. Then I'll say address of uh, j. And then I'll say, dereference the address of J, something like this. Okay. Now this is a very easy way for you to also understand the pointers in future. Okay. So, yeah. So, D, P, N, we will talk next. Yeah. D. Yeah. So data declaration, and then I'm going to run this a.org file. Exactly. So as you can see, you know, without the dereference value, J, the first one and the third one, both of them are same. Correct, yes, yeah. It's just that we're abstracting it a step, that's all. Okay. Right, address of J is nothing but where the location of J is. And if we dereference that, we're getting that. But you know, this will be very cumbersome to write. Now here is where we have something called as a pointers. So when you declare a pointer, you say something like the type of the pointer. It means a pointer which will hold some address. And then what this IP does, if you see, this IP is something which holds the address of what? J saver. That is what we refer to. Okay. Okay. So pointer holds the address of J. And then you can think of dereferencing IP. What does it mean? You are trying to put as good as you know, you, you can equivalently say star j something, right? Yeah, can, yeah, internally it is like address of j only, and then I'm trying to put a star on it, dereferencing. So IP is trying to fetch the value and also edit it because it is editable. Okay, right. yeah. So now, what is the expected value of uh, j or star j after this line? Um, so the the j value um, will be 10 but the ad yeah. uh, address is going to be 100 uh, I mean no. the location of j no, no. location is same uh -huh. wherever j is is what pointer is pointing to. so pointer holds only the address it doesn't holds any value it's an indirect okay. addressing mechanism addressing so it okay. holds the base address or the address of a location, correct? Yes. So, so when I say, when I say int star IP, IP has its own location. Okay. So oh, I understood. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, understood. Yeah. yeah. So there will be something like address of IP versus IP. Correct. Yeah. So this holds the address of J in this example. Okay. Yes. And this is where 
IPs, addresses. It means pointer also has a memory location. Okay, that is what it refers to. Why I explain this? Because see, if you know the dereferencing value, you also know how pointers are be, be, being assigned and dereferenced. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That was the whole idea. Yeah. Now, as you already see in this example, that you know both of them are an accepted format. So when we compile this, there is no compiler warning in there. Now I'll try to explain you about the the just semicolon kind of stuff, J semicolon. And then we will try to compile the program and see how does the code reacts to it. Okay, I'm gonna have something more. Yeah, I think this better. Yeah. You can see compiler has simply ignored the statements. I'll save this file and then see well, how does it say. Let me hear. Right? It's simply ignored. <clears throat> if I say something like, you know, okay, give me wall, warning all. Now you can see different kinds of warning. Statement with no effect. Yes. Yeah. Example of unused value. You have declared a variable i. Again, you haven't used it. Control reaches at the void, but there is no return. So it's a main, which must have a return type. So let's try to remove these warnings. So return. Sometimes we use something like exit underscore success. I mean, one also does the same thing or? Yeah, this is something, exit zero. This is also a, as good as exit zero itself. And this is defined in the header file called as std lib. Okay. Std lib has this. So now we can see one error at least, sorry, warning at least will be reduced, you can see. Now i and j are not being used, so they are cribbing. So let's try to just overcome them. I assigns to J. So I can see that now J is also being used and I also is being initialized. But I has never been used is what his question is. Like you can see here at least we are printing J. But I never looks to be used. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a little bit worry for them. We can print them and make it over. So I, I hope you got the declaration stuff here. All right. Yes. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Now let's get into control loops and uh, things. So are you aware about the different kinds of control loops and all? Assume that yes. Yep. Uh, so you're aware about if, you're aware about else, uh, right? If else, then you're aware about switch? Yeah, switch, yes. Okay. Uh, how about ternary operator? Are you aware about shorthand? For example, something like this. Let me check this, okay. So if I say something like i greater than j, where I can say plus plus i, and then i greater than j, and then we have question mark, okay, printer. Yeah. else printer so are you aware about this statement 23 no yeah so this is an example of ternary operator sometimes you don't need to use if but it's like a short circuit kind of thing so here in itself you are it's as good as doing an i like a statement you write i greater than z so they will be compared in this case, I have incremented the value of I in line number 16, mm -hmm. so which will be true. So the first line, Yahoo, will be printed. That is what is expected without you using a specific loop. 
Like no need of um, opening the no name. need of using an if or something. So sometimes it's very handy. Okay. So it is saying that oh no. So plus plus i. It is going for the if i i is greater than j, which is true, right? So it has come. If it is not, it will come to j. So now what I do is, I'll give uh, j as hundred. Oh, you can see here, J has been modified yeah. by IP. Yeah, that's why it was yeah. coming as yeah, I didn't, I didn't realize this here. I lost in the example. Correct. That's correct. Yeah. If I comment this line number 20, I think Yahoo yeah, should be what we expect. Correct. Yeah. IP is set not used. That's fine. Yahoo, yeah, mm -hmm. as expected. Got it. So sometimes this is much shorthand rather than going for, you know, the if else body and all. So something quickly we, we can you know uh, plan this ternary operators like this. So this this instead of i greater than j, I mean we can take longer expressions as well. Correct. Oh, okay. Like see, sometimes it can be like you know, say we can have very complex structures also. Say int function one, and it returns say. And I can have another function. So you can see how powerful it will become suddenly. So I can directly make a call to these functions. Okay. <clears throat> So what we are doing, we are trying to say two functions like f1 and f2 is being compared. Now imagine function can be very large, big. Yeah. Yeah. You can have a lot of structures and your business logic written. That can be returned and can be verified by the programs. Correct? Because f1 has 100. Yeah. Yeah. So use is wise, no? I mean, yeah. It, it is the same thing. So very complex functions can return address. We can compare one address greater than another and then do some job. Okay, it means you are in the same location. So you know you can think of different use cases. Also. Return some structure and verify if the size of the structure is same or not. Then oh, do some. Okay. You are, of, we're comparing arrays. You can exactly, exactly. There you get it. Okay. So you can start thinking that these functions will start returning the size of an array in some way. Oh. And then they can start comparing. I didn't okay. know, know this. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we can, we can. So at least, you know, this is the idea and option too. Another alternative is very easy, like something like, you know, if and else. And I mean, I, I'm going to skip this because I know that. Yeah, that's kind of. This is, yeah, I, I just want to skip this. Yeah. I want to get into something like switch case a little bit. So, you know, if one thing you have to remember is when you write too many if else also, it's not a good programming practice. Correct. You should convert all these if else into something like switch or lookup functions mm -hmm. or lookup tables. So always prefer using something like a switch. Okay. And in switch, you have something like cases. So you can have choice. And then in this, you can have multiple cases. Usually these cases must boil down to some kind of a value. A is fine, but refers to capital 65. So capital A 65 is what is the ASCII value for capital A. Okay. That is what you mean. So it must be some number. It can't be a string or something. Okay. okay. That you have to remember. If it is a string, there must be some conversion rule to convert that into some unique value. So behavior is undefined in mm -hmm. this case. I'm just giving an example of say capital A. And case of uh, capital B. It's not required that you must have all the always a default function. So it's okay not to have it also, though there is a default. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so something like you know only A and B.
And here, what you could do is, uh, see. you can call big functions as well here. I mean, just your printf itself is a function. So that's why I placed it here. Okay. And you can do some statements also. So no need to write, you know, open bracket in case A like this and then do it. No required. No, no need. All the lines which you write over here will be perfectly taken care by you. Just sequential execution. If you do not want a, a break, then it will default continue. So if I don't give a break, after A, it will automatically jump to B. Okay. So usually people want to give a break after one of the case. And the, yeah. the, switch, the choice here, I mean, it's yeah. a keyword or it, I can use? You need to declare, it's a variable. You need to declare it as a, okay. Yeah, say for example. Sure. Okay. And then, you know, you can hard code a choice. Or here, you can always accept a choice. So you can say printf, enter a choice. Okay. 65, 66, you can give hints also. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can say something like, yeah, I'm also writing a program so that you can restart realizing the way I write the code. That's also important. Okay. And what I meant by that is, you know, there are two kinds of programmers. One of them, the real programmers, and the other ones are the God programmers. Mm -hmm. Now, you know what is a God programmer? Mm -hmm. A God programmer is the one who is like a god, you know, if you say him to write uh, and implement an algorithm, say, I want you to ask you to write a bubble sort or a quick sort, or maybe swap off some strings, okay? If it is already mugged by them, what these guys do is, the god programmers will declare all the variables which they are going to use for the next five years in the beginning only. <laughs> okay. You know, and that is a bad thing. So that, that's not the way to write the code. As you must have seen, as you start writing the program, you might need some variables. So you write them. Mm -hmm. You use them. Then go on top, declare that variable and come back. Okay. So first you have to write the idea in the code, the expression in the code. And then you can go on top and decide. You can't be a god that, okay, I know these all 500 variables will be used for the next 10 years. Please declare in the beginning itself. Impossible. I mean, when you write up or type a code, we can just come to know whether you are a naive programmer or whether you're an experienced programmer, just by doing, looking at the style of the way you write the code. Okay. Okay. Imagine your manager is just passing by. Mm -hmm. And if I see you writing the code and you're declaring you know, left and right all the variables on the top. <laughs> I mean, this guy is, <laughs> he's a mugged up guy. Okay, I think he has mugged up all the libraries. <laughs> so he knows all the variables which is going to be used. <laughs> And the moment you change and tweak the algorithm to something else, that guy will get into Google Stack Overflow Quora. Yeah. <laughs> Come back again with some for copy paste edit. Take one more month to debug it. That's it. That's it. Working on it. WIP. That's all. Excel comes back with that. Yeah. Uh, it's crazy out there. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> Ah, here we aren't accepting the variable, so it should also be that we accept the variable. So I'm removing this uh, pointer as of now. Anyway, we aren't using this. And here you can scan this up. So read something from a keyboard by saying scanf. Mm -hmm. Mod D is the scanf is used for you know accepting the data from the keyboard. Okay. Mod D refers to what is the data type, and the address of that data has to be mentioned by in this case choice. So now your keyboard will wait for this IP. Okay, so there's a following either. You commented the declaration, so IP is not visible. Okay. And, uh, and uh, there is a break. Break should be ending up with a semicolon. It has what? Oh, it has a colon. Yes. Yeah.
So now I'll give something like 65, choice A, 66, choice B, right? Yeah. Yeah. So this is there. So always, you know, if you have more than three if statements or something, it's a standard optimization by compiler accepted that, you know, convert that into a switch, which becomes easier. So if you have like four, four A for 10 if conditions, if you're experiencing, immediately you must convert that into a switch. Remember in switch also, there's a penalty. First, it will compare with this. Then it will be failed. Then it will go to this. Then it will fail. Then it will come to this. So what we can do is we can, you know, by, by non-preemptive uh, execution in real-time application, we can know the kind of frequency which is often used. You know? So it means if I come to know the sequence of execution, right? That what kind of features are often used, I can keep them on top. And the features which are rarely used, I can keep it on bottom. Why? Um. The search penalty. Okay. See, if I give you something like 15 cases, mm -hmm. so to suppose if you type 1, 2, 3, 4 to 15 cases here, instead of A, B, let's take A to Z. Mm -hmm. So there are 26 cases, right? Mm -hmm. Assume Z is the mostly, mostly frequently or most frequently utilized option mm -hmm. in your application. Then every time somebody wants to, because everybody will use Z most of the time. To reach to Z, how many comparison you have to do? 25 times. Yeah. So 25 times, if true, then no, false, 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 and then it will become true. So time taken to perform the search will increase. So people, what they do is they change it. They will put the case Z on the first itself. Okay. Why? Because most of the time people will use what? Z as an option in our understanding about an application, right? Okay. Yeah. So it will directly go for Z and straight away match and run. So response for that will be faster. Okay. okay. So sometimes the cases needs to be manually adjusted in certain predictable applications. Yeah. That's all. Okay. Now, are you aware about the loopings? <clears throat> yeah. I mean, um... Yeah. So I'll quickly brief them. Yeah. Yeah. So see in loopings, there are three kinds of loops. And the first thing is they use a while one. So while, and then you have something like a case or expression. This expression finally will evaluate to some zero or one. Okay. So if it is greater than or equal to one is true. It means you are inside this loop. Okay. Else you will not get inside this loop. That's the whole idea. So if an expression, okay, it's expected here. Say, uh, I'll take some D data is equal to 100 and in y is equal to nothing, say zero. And I'll scan f uh, the y. Address of y. And now I'm comparing here. So while y is less than d data. Okay. It keeps printing. Y is now one D and then Y. So I'm printing you know, the, the value of Y. And it will always be same value unless until I make changes in the Y, right? So I'll say Y plus equal to say 100 or no, say 10 or 7. So what happens every time this while is running, as long as it is less than the 100 or D data, it will keep printing this, right? Yes. So this is A and this is B. Okay, there's a mistake here. I didn't call this function inside. 
okay so let me call the command okay yeah yeah so i'll just command this you saw this if zero and this it's a code command remember in the macro i explained about this yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I'm just commenting. You can enable later on for testing. So I'm just calling this function here, which is um, okay. It has become lopping. Just excuse me. Mm -hmm. Now you can see it's 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 actually waiting for the value of y. So I'll give the value as of y as five. So five plus seven, right? Twelve, nineteen, twenty-six till ninety-six. So the moment ninety-six, every time it is being compared, ninety-six plus uh, five would have gone beyond. So it must have been hundred one. Yeah. Right. Oh, I'm adding seven, so it must be one o three. So let's come out and print the value of y here. So you know what's the value of y. So when you come out of this, y is modified to the new value. I'll give five again. One of three. Correct? Yeah. Yeah, because data got modified there. Uh, right? Why? Why was finally ninety six was compared? After that, you added seven. It became one of three. One of three was compared with hundred. Definitely, hundred and three is not less than hundred. So you throw them out. comes out of the loop yeah yeah now when do we use while is when you are not sure of the number of loops or iteration will be performed mm -hmm. this is very important for an external world connection so all the event driven programming in embedded application is very good example all the embedded examples talk about you know accepting interrupts from external world and interrupts are a very good asynchronous event correct yes and event driven programming cannot be pre planned so while is so if what i don't know from a sensor what data is coming correct and how long it will keep coming yeah i can just say okay as long as this particular while the you know com port 1 is active or is working i keep fetching the data if it is disabled i come out so working refers to one and com port disable means zero so as long as it is one it is going to get the data if it is zero it will stop getting the data how we can control maybe we can give an external switch also to control this okay. right why yeah. which if i switch it on then it will this while will start accepting the data if i switch that off the value will become zero and then you know it will trigger back the particular code to right yeah. yeah so that's why while is often used when you are not sure of when your results are going to meet or condition is going to be met there is one more variation of while loop where you want to at least run a statement for one time which we call it as do while okay so in do while loop what happens the first time whether the condition is true or false doesn't matter it will get inside it and then it will come out just quickly refreshing that say do and immediately after the closure of the this while and you can see why less than d data okay and here what i do is i would just say why is Assign to one zero three. I'm hard coding this value. Okay. Yeah. Or let it be and just see this as one. So you already know that the value one hundred and three, right? Yeah. Yeah.
y is I just wanted to show you this okay. and I'll comment on line number 24. So I do say a five again. Mm -hmm. Now you can see here five to 96 as expected. You know, it was 103. So that's why it came out. Correct. Yeah. And because if it is, if one, the code is executed, mm -hmm. so I can do ensures that y is printed at least once but after that you can see that y is not running again okay yeah now uh, immediately what if i make y is equal to 5 again first time anyway it will run correct yes and 5 is anyway less than so it will come out so it does not matter, right? At least true or false, okay. it will run at least once and then it will compare the information. Mm -hmm. This is also used in a scenario that you want to be interactive for the first time and then you don't care from there. Okay. Yeah. And uh, you can also pass like while, like true or false directly. Like ha. The thing is, you know, uh, C by default doesn't support uh, true or false. Okay. But, but C99, C99 does that. For example, mm -hmm. now in GNU you can do that, but NCC will not support this. Okay. Say for example, right now you can see it is true, and I'm going to come comment this. I will. So the challenge with what, uh, true is there is no expression. It's like a condition, a non-conditional loop. The program will keep running. You know, it doesn't matter now for that. While it is true, it is running. And y y is equal to y plus seven kind of a thing. Correct? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, maybe two. You start with two and goes to 93. And after that it comes out because seven is still the key number. Mm -hmm. The challenge for this two or one is the expression is being used environmentally. Oh, okay. Yeah. So now if I wanted to have, suppose in, you know, some of the places where you do not have true and uh, false supported. Okay. There might be scenarios where true and false is not supported in some older compilers for you. Okay. Some classic compilers you will have okay. where you will not have this support. Okay. So then you can have a different kind of a data declaration to achieve this. We use it as enumeration, enum. So are you aware about usage of the enum? Are you aware about the enums? Uh, no, maybe. Yeah, so you must have seen. See, enumeration is something which is a constant value declaration, like an integer. There are two integers, enum. And, you know, we can say something like weak day weeks mm -hmm. or week day and then what we can do is we can put here something like monday tuesday so monday by default can be assigned to zero then tuesday then you can have something like wednesday thursday Friday. I'm not counting weekends here. Okay. I can have something like enum status. I can say stop. On and off. What enumeration does it provides a very easy way of declaring uh, some different kind of integer variables, which may have 
incremental values. Say, for example, mon Monday is recognized by zero. Tuesday is automatically incremented by one. Mm -hmm. okay. Wednesday is two. Thursday is three. Friday is four. Okay. If you start something like the value here to be, say, five, then the next will be six, seven, eight, and nine. You know, okay. something like that. It's in automatically incremented value. So sometimes you need to represent certain, you know, uh, uh, expression or value in, in, in this kind of a thing, right? Mm -hmm. So off is one here, on is zero. So I will be writing something like this. For your control, we will write something like E bool. E num bool. And then we will say false zero and true unassigned. Even is equal to one is fine. And now we can compare over here. Even, you know, I can show you not only in while, but even in e false, right? If I can say something like false. I'll do something like this. I'll be here and check that out. You can see it's false, isn't here? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And now I'll say if true. So I can create my you know data type which is not supported also in the compilers where true and false is not highlighted, you know. So if you if you come across some legacy compilers where they don't support, you can see here. Now we have RV here, right? Okay. Yeah. So enum is a very nice way of you know representing these uh, kind of uh, variables, and if you declare some variable which you want to give some special meaning to them, it's good for comparison with some fixed value, correct? Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Often we use that. Good that you asked. I could correlate one example here. Anyway, I was thinking to you know, explain this as a part of finite state machine program. Oh, okay. Anyway, now let's talk about. So these are some very minor pieces. There's another thing called as for loop. I'm sure you are aware. For is oftenly used. Yes. Often used. Yeah. And for comes with three expression here. So for say, I declare in our variable i, and I say i assigns zero i less than 10, 100, and say plus plus i. This is a very clear example of that you are aware about how many iteration it is. So for is used when you, for deterministic iteration. If you know that you know within 100 iteration you have to perform some job, then it is good. So it's used for predictable iteration based solution. When you're absolutely sure of the iteration you make use of for. So the first is the initialization expression, second is comparison, and third is increment or decrement operation. Okay. The problem with for is that it uses three cycles for every instruction execution. One for initialization, one for comparison, and one for increment. Mm -hmm. So even though you know I am saying something like semicolon, just to print NOP it will take three cycles. So 100 times it will have no operation, no operation, no operation, no operation. So it's like a delay. Okay. For a fixed time, right? Mm -hmm. If I say while one semicolon, it is forever. Mm -hmm. So can generate delay. Second usage of for is to ensure that you know you initialize the actual values within the statement and put the comparators. 
keep the fraud as much as simple it is. I have also seen people using something like uh, another variation of this, which is plus plus I in. instead of that, they will be using what I plus plus. <clears throat> and I'm, I strongly condemn the line number 39. We should not be using. The reason is, whenever you use an postfix operation like this, I plus plus, what happens? You know the difference, right? Resultant different, you must be known. That in a prefix, the value is uh, incremented first, right? Yeah. And the postfix yeah. means the value will be incremented later. Yeah. Yeah. So if it has to be um, you know, incremented after the statement, then somebody has to store the data, right? Mm -hmm. okay. So then temporary gets generated. So imagine if you're iterating 100 times with I++, mm -hmm. 100 times you will be generating a temporary. It will badly impact your program, will become slow down. Oh, okay. So generating too much temporaries in the program can heavily affect the execution of the program. Okay. Hence, we should see that when we write programs, we should have least amount of temporaries being generated. Mm -hmm. We cannot stop temporary being generated because it's a part of the expression handling. Every expression finally will lead to some or the other temporaries being created. But we can minimize the temporary creation. Okay. okay. In embedded. Yeah. So that's it. Now with all this basic, let's see the impact of, we'll study right now a small case study about the impact of declaration in a looping environment. But before we study, I think we will take a two to three minutes of a pause and then start. Sure. Fair enough? Yeah? yeah. That will be more of a whiteboard driven example. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. I'll be, yeah, thanks. Let's take a five minutes break and join here. Yeah? Okay. Sure. I'll be back 9.15. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I'm back. Venu, are you there? Hi, Animesh. Yeah. yeah. So, shall we get started? Yes. Yeah. So, this will be a small case study for us, okay? Okay. Where we want to understand how significant is for a programmer to know the compiler and the processor both that's the whole idea okay okay and for that we wanted to take uh, to manual optimization where a compiler also cannot do much but you know we need to perform some Okay. of our own you know optimization technique so that's something which is very much why is it not sharing yeah so i hope you can see the white screen now yeah, I, can, I can see the screen all right so you know there are two kinds of uh, uh, popular hardware architecture for us. One of them is in the way the, you know, data are stored and is manipulated on an architecture. Okay. One of them is called as stack based architecture, which is here written as TOS, top of the stack based architecture. Okay. And another one is non stacked architecture. It means there are a lot of microcontrollers, which doesn't have their own dedicated stack. Okay. Mm -hmm. And in the manner we get influenced there. So my declaration can have a different kind of an impact. Over so top of the stack and non stacked architecture. Okay. To understand this as a case study, we will take two programs. Okay. We will take one of them, which is say void fx as a function. It takes the data as say int j, comma, int i. It does nothing beyond this, but it has a for loop. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe I'll write that in a yeah, for. And it says that I'll be using something like 
Int i is equal to zero. So what I'm going to take a case of i and j, where i is being used here. So i is equal to zero, i less than hundred, and plus plus i. Okay, and then that will be you know followed by another loop. Which is for again j is equal to zero, j less than hundred, and plus plus j. Okay, and then here I will do something. Assume that there is some function by us which we are calling inside. Okay. So this is one of our function. And there is another function which we have here. The difference between these two function is here. It is an FY function. It's just the declaration here. J is declared first, and I is declared later. Okay. And now we want to see and study the impact of that. This is case one, and this is case two. All right. Yeah. And now you know if we look at first and foremost the top of this stack based architecture, like the Intel or major of the you know microprocessor based architecture okay. so how actually uh, the statement goes on is we will have first and foremost i and j pushed in the stack so either it will be from left to right or right to left suppose if a compiler is going for a memory allocation from left to right mm -hmm. okay I will take an example of right to left or left to right. So say, if it is left to right, this we will take it as case A. Case B, and this we will take it as case A. So let's stop case A. So you know how does it work? First, we get the stack being built something like this. So this is my top of the stack. Okay. This is my top of the stack. And I and J. So what happens here? J is pushed here and I is on top. Yes. Right? Something like that. Because we are going from left to right. Now based on this, what happens is whenever you want to use this for I is equal to zero. So you know the iteration goes something like this. I is equal to zero. And then while I is equal to zero j keeps running from zero to 99 internally and then it continues like this till i reaches to 99 and j again goes from zero to 99 getting it right yes yeah this is the status of the current now let's look at the operation of this. So in order to access i, what do we do? We have to pop i first, right? Mm -hmm. So I'll say pop i. Fair enough. But how about now the moment, so pop i will be means this is accessed. Now j is there. The moment you get into the body again here, mm -hmm. the another loop, again the stack frame is ready. Now what I do? To 
access j for inner loop first i have to pop i and then followed by pop j getting it yeah now let's look at the cycle usage of it so if i was using a cycle for outer you know so let's talk about the timing here so for outer loop what should be the total cycle if we assume that pop is a atomic instruction it completes within one cycle okay mm -hmm. on an architecture then 100 iteration into one cycle correct correct yes that is roughly 100 cycle yes and then we have an inner loop which talks about it will run over 100 for 100 over times right yes but for this it will take two cycles because pop i and then pop j then only you can access j right mm -hmm. so in this case it will take what roughly 10200 cycles correct um isn't it 100 over 100 is uh, 10000 right yeah. so i think it is an opposite it is 200000 yeah. 20000 huh? yeah 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 exactly so 100 into 100 is how much it's four zeros right so that's correct 100 is added correct so 20000 cycles now let's change this particular case to the another behavior so what we do is we take the another stack on this line but only the difference in this time is going to be my top of this stack is i manually declared the variable right now in the case b if you look at i missed to write that case b correct so this is my top of this stack <coughs> the declaration wise now the variable will be stored a bit differently we can think of this variable here which is will be i and this variable will be j correct yes yeah. now in this scenario the number of iteration is going to be the same i is equal to 0 j is equal to 0 to 99 doesn't change this continues till we have you know i is equal to 99 and j still continues to 0 to 99 correct okay. yes only the difference here is the way pop and push up will take place now for outer loop you will have two cycles used because you want to access j no sorry i so first you will pop j and then you will perform pop i but for inner the j is already on the top so you can directly say what pop j j this continues now based on this if we have to calculate the case the outer loop timing will be how much let's guess that it will be 100 <coughs> cycles over two cycles because outer loop takes two cycles yeah. which is your 200 cycles and inner loop will become 100 over 100 over just one cycle one cycle yeah. which is 100000 no yeah 10000 yeah 10000 sorry yeah 10000 yes yeah. and now so overall i think it will be total cycle is how much is 10000 200 200 okay. 
you can see the significant impact in your same program yeah it's almost double double almost yeah i could not believe this in 2001 when i was learning you know this session from ted's rule ted was the guy okay who has developed lot of airbus and these softwares so from ti you no know, we were sorry from nortel you no know, we were write, i was writing the base station okay so i was working on a motorola power pc mpc 850 series architecture oh okay so hardware was given to me i was writing the cpm module mm-hmm. we had a motorola 60 uh, yeah power pc 603 core 603 core which i was working with at that time mm-hmm. and we were writing the boot order for that and then we wanted to have our custom operating system which was cots being uh, replaced so we had a vx works and we were supposed to write a re- rt linux over it okay. so we can you know reduce the cost of the entire os as bss implementation mm-hmm. and when i attended this session i was like you know taken by surprise that how this is a compiler cannot do anything over here you know because once the compiler will store the data from left to right it will always store the data from left to right yeah you cannot do anything right yeah, so a programmer if he knows how actually this data is stored it will be like really awesome okay. manually by manual optimization what a compiler could not do because it made some assumptions while he designed this right yes, yes. and because of that if somebody writes a for loop in this way it can be reduced so in older compilers because of this kind of scenario there was a keyword called as register mm. so what they used to say is that which is the most frequently utilized variable should be observed so among four for i and j if you consider mm. j is the most frequently utilized variable yes yeah. right Yes. like i is used once after that actually j is there for 99 times in the memory needed so the most frequently utilized can be made as what a register keyword okay. again the problem with register keyword was it was just a request to the compiler so you cannot force a variable to go and sit in a register mm-hmm. compiler will look at your statement and find that if there is enough register free to let your data store there otherwise it is pushed back to the stack and again the same story okay so register was a convenience for programmer when they write very simple code the moment you start writing complex code mm-hmm. most of your registers will get busy okay and hence register keyword is simply ignored right so that's why to avoid any kind of confusion register keyword has been deprecated in most of the modern c programming language okay yeah so manual optimization knowing your hardware and knowing your compiler the way data stores are you can study the impact of declaration under the looping and rolling and required it's very evident yeah. right very, very interesting i mean i didn't yeah. Know. yeah 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 now let's get into let's take an, another case here which is the second one we will take an example of uh, you know non stacked architecture example it means such architecture which doesn't have you know their own uh, uh, stack a address there is no fixed address they 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 do not have a formal stack area rather they have a stack uh, pointers but they share some general purpose registers okay all the microcontrollers are very good example of it even you can think of even 8051 arm this is a very good example where they do not have a dedicated stack okay. let's take an example of 8051 i'm sure you are aware about it yes yeah. so if you look at an you know uh, 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 8051 you will observe that you know they have banked architecture scheme now what i mean by this it means if you look at their registers 8051 has four bank of general purpose registers 
Yeah. So this is like you know RAM area, which is split into registers. Okay. General purpose register. And each of them, you know, each bank contains roughly eight registers if you look at. Mm -hmm. They name them as you know R02, R7. You know, there are some architectures where you will also have R0 to R31 registers, 60, 16 registers, R0 to 15 registers, correct? 32 bit. Uh... Yeah, yeah. No, it doesn't go that way. Yeah, this is what I wanted to know from most of the hardware engineers. Why is that, mm -hmm. you know, that microcontrollers, okay, yeah. like 8051 has only seven registers. Mm -hmm. Why doesn't it have 15 registers? Can you give me this answer? I mean, it's it's bi binary, right? Two power three. Uh, don't I, I mean, it's um, it's it's eight bit um, controller. Controller, yeah. No, so do you, so for sixteen bit controller, do you think uh, R zero to R fifteen will be supported? Um, I think so. Uh, no, that's wrong. See how it goes. Just to give you, just because you know you have. Answer. You should not get an unanswered. See, let's talk about it all. The, the register division is a plan of instruction set planning. You know, when you design an instruction for a CPU, have you ever designed a CPU? You know? um, no, we use the oh. CPU. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, sorry, sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, see, when we used to design the CPU, the first thing we used to, we used to, used to consider was the instruction set design. And all the instruction set architecture, we will have something like say, register to register instruction. For example, if somebody wants to perform move L or move command, and he wants to say something like R0 to R7. So this is an example of what? Register to register instruction. If I say move, R7, instead of that, I'll say R15 to R13. Or if I say something like move R31 to R30. Now, you know, first and foremost, we need to understand Let's take this example, R31 and R30. So, how much bits do you need to represent 31 register? Two to the power? Yeah. Five. Five. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, five, yeah. Yeah. So five, so I will say, oh, zero, 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 zero. Five bits means this is for source register, correct? Yes. It means R31. Yeah. For destination also, I need what? The five, another five. Five, another five. Very good. So how many bits we need now? Ten. Ten bits. If register selection itself takes ten bits, then what about the opcode? Yeah. So I cannot use this for eight bit. But can I use this for 16 bit, by the way? In 16 bit? It is like what, five plus five is how much? 10, correct? So out of 16 bit, 10 bit is consumed. How many is left? Six bits. Six bits. It means two to the power six, which is roughly 64 different instruction can happen within this register to register. Okay. So if I have a leverage of say six, six bits each, or now seven bits each, two to the power seven is 128 register. So seven, seven is how much? 14. How many bits are left? Uh, four. Two out of 16. If we are comparing yeah. a 16 bit architecture, yeah. 14 is gone, two is left, seven bits each. Yeah. It means in this case, I can have R0 to R127, correct? Yes. But how many bits are left? 
two bits are left. So four different instruction is possible whenever we perform register to register operation. Okay. okay. You understand that? Yes, yes. Yeah. Now this boils down that best case for eight bit registers are what? Four, four bit. So if I take a source register mm -hmm. for representing one register, and four bits, then I can actually have R0 to R15, correct? Yeah. But the problem is if you consume both the, uh, you know, bits, four, all the eight bits, only for what? Register selection, then how will you decode that which instruction it is? So yeah. opcode is not getting anything. Only register is getting the value, correct? Right. Yeah. So what yeah. is the way to come back? Zero, both the sides, register. Yeah. And then the next two bits are what? For opcodes. So it means four instructions are possible whenever a register to register mm -hmm. programming will be done in any 8051 microcontroller. Okay. You get that? Yeah, yeah I understood um, this code. Yeah. yeah. In, in, in uh, Broadcom, suppose, I mean, we use um, uh, the Broadcom ASX. The yeah. So there are some registers that you can read and write to. Correct. So there, I mean, I remember like if it is 32 bit processor, then the register length is 32 bits. Exactly. Usually that is about the data set it can carry because you know, in a 32 bit, Yeah. why they optimize for 32 bit? It is possible. But the thing is they will take extra cycles to compute larger register set if it goes beyond 32. Think, no? Oh, okay. Because I have only say 32 uh, bus, no? <coughs> Address and database. Right. Yeah, yeah. So if I have to pull out a data, something which is beyond R R one or R R R thirty one, mm -hmm. one extra cycle, it is a padding. So again, another thirty two bit line I have to create for. Oh, okay. Right. Physically. Yeah, that's where I was confused. Though. Exactly. Exactly. So it, so only for that accessibility. If I had a better call and if I'm writing a thirty two bit or a sixty four bit uh, architecture, I will still have sixty four bit so that in one cycle itself. Or in one clock cycle, yeah. I can fetch the entire data. You know, that's right. the whole idea. Um, um, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But possibility-wise, that is not the reason of why they split this. Oh, okay. okay. As you can see right now, very clearly, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I understood this part. Yeah, yeah. This is the first question which we should ask from a hardware engineer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So now let's come back to this R zero to R seven. And in this code is bank registers, right? So RB0, RB1. Yeah, yeah. So I'll have R0. And then I will have R7. Same here. R0 and R7. I'll just skip that you know this. Okay. This will make it as RB0, RB1, RB2. After, you know, 10, 15 minutes, my area, I stay around Indranagar. Oh, okay. So my area will be completely, you know, uh, jolting the, and chanting the, uh, the you know, the Ramanami is uh, this oh. one. So t tomorrow is a Ramanami. Yeah, tomorrow, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. This so, starts now. Yeah. So these guys will, you know, drum the whole night up to one okay. o'clock. Oh. Yeah. They run a lot of procession here in Bangalore. Yeah. Oh, okay. I don't know which part of the area I, you guys are. Actually, I we uh, I used to live in Rajajinagar before, but now uh -huh. um, I moved to this GM Palya. Uh -huh, I know it's near only to Indra. Yeah, close by. Yeah. Very close by. Yeah. Okay, so you should come out this area and see the noise. It was really <laughs> irritating. <laughs> Kids, it is fun. Yeah, true. Yeah, so RB3, let me quickly uh, clear this before the sound gets very, very red. Yeah. yeah. So now from bank register, how do we switch, you know? Say, what is the stack pointer address in our 8051? Do you remember? There's an internal address called as 07. Okay. So whenever you reset a microcontroller like 8051, mm -hmm. you will realize that uh, the internal address it is 07. Now, naturally, 07 means it refers to the first bank, seventh register. Oh. Right? That is what it refers to, or it means to, if you look at. Yeah, exactly. That is what. 
<laughs> right? Yeah. It must, I know you have forgotten it, please. <laughs> Who cares now? The project is, you're running an Android box. So where is the age group even coming up? I understand. Uh, no offense, no offense. Yeah. And then, you know, like now, so how it works, say, if I have to declare a variable here, just taking the same example, int i, comma, int j. Or whether we have int j, comma, int i. Okay. So how will it impact is first, it will say SP is equal to SP plus one, right? Stack pointer will be incremented by one. Yeah, yeah. So the moment, you know, you are here, from here, actually, you are going to jump over here. Mm -hmm. Correct? Which is the another bank area because you're on the top area, R7. Internal it is R8, which is internal address of S will become eight. Yeah, that goes okay. okay which is nothing but a bank switch here okay immediately you had a bank switch penalty so there will be a register here you must have been aware about called as psw program status word yes yeah yeah in that the first two bit is nothing but which controls the bank register so if it is zero zero mm -hmm. zero one Right. Yeah. One zero and one one. So based on these, you would be selecting the different banks, correct? Yes. So you know, from this refers to this bank, this value will refer to this bank, this value will refer to this bank, this value will refer to this bank, and so on and so on. Mm -hmm. So in this scenario, what happens? You will see I also here and J here. Or J will be here. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Yeah. And I will be here in the another case, right? Only this permutation will change. Okay. Whether you declare in FX or FY, case A or case B, if you take. Maybe J is down and I is up. Mm -hmm. Or I is down and J is up. But both of them are referring to the register, not to the stack. You understand that? Correct. Yes. Yes. So in this case, what will be the difference in the impact? Um, nothing. Yeah. It's... There is nothing called as push pop. Both are sitting in the register itself. Yeah. Stack pointer is a fake. It is just, it's just a, a stack pointer is not having any dedicated push and pop operation. Both of them refers to the register. Mm -hmm. So now, the, suddenly the same code which was compiled for a top of stack based uh, compiler, mm -hmm. which will have significant difference in the way you are writing the looping, will see there is no difference in the way microcontroller is reacting to this. Yeah. So, you got it? Yeah. Yeah. But it doesn't mean that there is, you know, microcontroller is the God programming structure kind of. Okay. Here also there can be scenario. Now let's take one more scenario where we will say variables like this, say I followed by, let me write a nursery rhyme over here. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, and then I directly come to J. If I had written my FX function or FY function mm -hmm. to be something like this, say, if I have an FX function, which was written something like this, right? Mm -hmm. And now if I have to study the impact and then the loop is the same, I and J loop itself is there, okay? okay. What will be the status? So I can think of, okay, let me keep the eraser in. Now let's study the impact quickly. So here I'll have, come on, help me here. So I'll say I over here. And after that, what it is? A, B, C, D, E, F, we go to the next register here, G. 
And now you see there is another bank waiting for you. H. I is not there, it's J. Yeah. I think you got that. Yes. Yeah. I is in another bank and J is in another bank. Another bank. Yeah. Again, I'm trying to explain that there will be a bank penalty. Okay. Correct? Yes. So by doing this, again, we will achieve the bank penalty. I mean, this could slow down the problem. Of course. Yeah. Of course. You got that. Because see, you have to switch. You have to set that bank. Then another set, set the bank. So you have to have always a bank switching penalty has to be escaped, right? Correct. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Suddenly it will become. So what are we trying to, what I'm trying to explain about this as a developer is, that knowing your compiler and knowing your processor mm -hmm. will increase the way you can write the performance oriented code in better. Number one. Second, also you should be aware that declaration can have significant impact whenever you have huge amount of looping and unrolling going on. Rolling and rolling. So please do not make declarations just thinking like, okay, it is just like another variable declaration. We are just learning the syntax for declaring and let's go home kind of thing. Oh, not for, just for the sake of doing it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. So I hope that gives you a very, you know, a yeah. deep insight about the way architecture and principles. Oh yeah, definitely, yes. Yeah. 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 Thank you. All right. Uh, from this, let's uh, switch to, I think for today we'll keep it here. I wanted to share you something which you have to read it as okay. a supporting document from here, okay? Okay. So, I don't know, can we get into your, can you share your screen and get into the reference? Sure. Yeah, I'll just uh, tell you which document you must go through. Okay. Um, uh, in the Google Drive. We know it is a possible for you to download a Google Drive for desktop and sync it. It will be much easier. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do that. Uh, yeah, this weekend maybe you can try that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah sorry. It helps, you know, like... You know, yeah, I, I thought like of doing it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. <laughs> At least I'm able to read your mind then. Okay. Um, yeah. So references. No, no. I have to go back. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, references. Reference. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Can you open this PDF? Optimizing. Optimizing. Save with embedded system. Yeah. So this is the conference paper. Yeah. Can okay. we? Roll down a bit, maybe. Yeah, see. So we'll finish the 4.0. You can read them. Can you drag down here? Yeah. Uh, for oh, Ted's role for optimizing software. Exactly, exactly. Oh, so okay. he's given two different, you know, architecture there. Okay. You can scroll. Yeah, know your processor and know your. Oh yeah. I'll come back. If you see for the first time, you may not. So this is an example of one of the compiler used by Eclon Corporation, Lon Networks. Okay. Lon Networks were used by Honeywell also, Lon. Mm -hmm. Neuron C compiler. Okay. See, here is giving an example of top of the stack. You can see, right? INJ example is here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. he's using a Motorola architecture running on a five megahertz. Okay. One takes 12.5 millisecond, microseconds to millisecond to execute. Okay. And another one, you know, it has a significant difference over there, right? It has a, roughly yeah. like 20 milliseconds. Here it is trying to show you that it is almost again double, but yeah, less than double. double. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then again, another example where, you know, pick RAM, pick controller is being used. <laughs> Here, RAM is in the register. So the impact of register will be very, very less. Okay, okay. What we studied, right? I mean, just to give you an example that, you know, how architecture can influence it. Okay. This document will give you an extra, you know, uh, confirmation. That's all. Okay. Otherwise, yeah. you can believe me what I'm saying is right. That's yeah, I, I'll go through this. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. So I think let's keep it here uh, for today. Okay. Next session, we'll talk about arrays a bit. Okay. Okay. Declaration sure. looping is done. All right. Yeah. So we're going to have tomorrow or... Uh... No, I think Saturday and Sunday will oh, take Saturday them off. Oh, okay, that's good. Yeah. Because, you know, kids and your <laughs> everybody needs some breakthrough. Yeah, yeah, that, that's good. I was I was about to ask for that. But... Yeah, 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 yeah. So let's, you guys enjoy the weekend. Refresh yourself. 
yeah. see if you can you know steal some one or two hours and then it will be good sure yeah. sure yeah let's yeah. come back on monday then yeah sure yeah all right yeah. fine thank carry you. on then good night thanks anyways thanks enjoy bye